So I have the lovely Susan McNally here. She's written a book called The Morrow Secrets. Yeah, it's, a, it's called The Morrow Secrets. It's the first in a trilogy that I'm writing for children. And it's up on Amazon Kindle. And where did this book come from then? I bought this old print of uh, a, an illustrator called Edward Ardizzoni, and it used to illustrate children's books. And it really grabbed me. And I remembered this perfect day when I was a child, and we'd been to a place near Harrogate called Brimham Rocks. And it was a hot, sunny day. I got very sunburned. I went home, went to bed, reading The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. The sun was coming through the windows, and yeah. I thought... Life doesn't get better than this. And I just thought, I have to write something. I don't, it just happened. And so uh, we were driving up to Yorkshire, my husband and I, and I'd written about, I don't know, 10 pages of the book. And I had him trapped in the car, so he couldn't say, I've got something else to do. <laughs> <laughs> so I began reading him the story. And he said to me, not bad. Tell me when you've written the book. And I just started, I was gripped. I just had to do it. Did you have to learn how to write? I read a lot of books, and I looked at other authors, and I looked at their, what they'd said about how to write. Yeah. Um, but I do really think you have to write the book you want to read. I mean, I've done it because I loved it. So my book is very gothic-y, and um, it's full of strange, weird creatures and rambling houses and a quest and friendship and the children's friendship on the journey. And, and I guess it, that's why it worked. When was the first day you wrote? Because you said you were in the car with your husband. What, what, what year was this? It was the 21st of March, 2011. And you finished it when? I probably finished the first draft round about the end of October. And how many pages was that? Well, I can tell you how many words. OK, uh, go it's on. It's about uh, 76, 77,000 words, which is probably the same length as the first Harry Potter, just to give you an idea. Oh. And I have to say, uh, the people who are listening, it isn't like Harry Potter. I've written a book I would want to have read as a child, but I also enjoyed it as uh, an adult. Okay. So adults have read the book and they've really enjoyed it. OK. So I think it takes you on a sort of mystical journey across this strange land that the people inhabit. And I've created this world that's inhabited by children in the strange house and the quest and the journey they have to discover the morrow secrets. I think the thing that I would say which is different about the book is that I've tried to create some very strong female characters. Very good. So the lead uh, girl is called Talitha Molson, and she's Ooh. very adventurous, and she moves the story forward. So she is the main character, and she's the one who's trying to discover the secrets. But I've also created some very um, weird and strange other female characters. And a particularly interesting one that isn't weird and strange is called Ruka, who's a skink. It lives in this, this strange forest, and she's fantastic, and she climbs, and she teaches the children to climb, and she's very, very adventurous. So one of my objectives was to create a book with strong female characters. It's not to say there aren't boys in the book, because there are. There are two other boys, one called Tyus and one called Benedict, and they go on the adventure with Talitha, as does her, her aunt called Esmeralda. But I do think that the, the many books, the girls aren't, you know, they can't climb or they don't do adventurous things. And I really just wanted to write something different where the girl was really taking the lead and it was absolutely about her. And I think the other thing for parents is I, I've tried, I, I have used long words, we used to call them. I wanted to kind of stretch the reader. So when I read a book and I said, Daddy or Mummy, what does this word mean? They'd go, go and look in the dictionary. So I wanted to have a book that would stretch their imagination mm. and their creativity. I wanted a, a gripping adventure story, and I do think it's a gripping adventure story. Oh, well done you. Because <laughs> the reviews on Amazon are... Quite good, from, from the kids who've read, who've read yeah, the book. Yeah, no, I've got, so far I've got uh, five five-star reviews and I've got some children who are reading it and they're sort of blogging me about what they think. Mm. And so that each sort of week they're sending me an update. Um, and so far they think it's a gripping story and it's dramatic and they like the strange characters. Tell me, tell me more about this blogging thing and then we can get on to oh, it. On my website I've got a blog okay. and uh, people can blog me. I'm very happy to be blogged. Please blog me. So some of the children are using that and others are emailing me and saying, we really like this, you know, this is where we've got to in the book. When's the next one coming out? One girl said, um, I don't usually really like reading. Mummy asked me if I'd read this book and I can't put it down. So oh. that really made my heart sing. Creating the characters for your book, yes. how, how did you come about that? You have to be able to imagine your character in any circumstance. I know what 
Um, hmm. Marlin, the Shrove, would do in any circumstances. And I know what um, the Weird Sisters would do in any circumstance that they were put in, any, any situation. And so the dialogue flows from that. I have got some dialects in the book and uh, a bit of summit and nout. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, I think and when you... That's another thing of how you can distinguish the characters because certain characters speak in a certain way or will use certain phrases to oh. another person. So instead of having he said, she said, they said at the end of every piece of dialogue, yeah. sometimes if you just use a word, the reader knows it's that person. Oh. So, I mean, but that didn't happen straight away. I think, I mean, I probably did four or five drafts of the book. I went back and I rewrote loads. What, why chunks. did you do that? My husband, who's been a fantastic support, uh, I said, what can you tell me about the creative world? Because he's a composer and, um, and he does write a bit, not, not, not fiction. But he, he said to me, sometimes you have to kill off your favourite children. And what he meant by that, <laughs> that sounds terrible, but what he meant by that was, and I think probably in the world of music, you create something which you love, right? Mm -hmm. But actually, when you write the book forward and you look back, it doesn't work. And you have to be able to kill it off. And I couldn't do that at first because you love these bits that you've written, all these characters, and actually sometimes you have to be able to go, no, it doesn't work. Um, and I think, and I didn't know how the story would unfold as I started. I di didn't okay. have a plan. Okay. So I had so lots of ideas that I kept writing down. So mm. the tip I would give to people who want to write is always have a phone or a, a pad and a pencil because things will occur to you, you'll see things, you'll watch people, write them down because even if you don't use them now, you can keep them for later. I went to Highgate Cemetery with some friends this week. Sounds very weird, but it's a fantastic Gothic uh, cemetery in the north of London, which is wonderful. And there was a fantastic quotation on one of the, wall, on one of the walls there in the cemetery and I photographed it because I want to use it for my book, maybe as the inscription at the beginning. When, when do you think you'd start the... Uh... I've started it. Oh, you started the second book? I've started one. the second book, and I've written about 10,000 words, and I've got a good oh idea gosh. how it's going forward. What I'm doing now, though, and this is about the self-publishing route, which I'm sure you'll yeah, get we'll, to... We'll get to in a second. Just to, let's finish this bit here. I'm doing a lot of work talking to people about my first book. So okay. um, I'm snatching time to write the second book. But immediately, I mean, immediately I started writing it. I'm plunging back into that world I've created... I don't know, there must be about 40 characters in the first book, if not more, I haven't counted them. I've got index cards on each one because can I remember if Spooner has blonde hair or, or one of the, the shrows oh. has a particular way of work, walking? And I did that because I just forgot and I had to go back and look at the bit that mm. I'd written maybe two months ago. So I'm, I'm really interested in, in this whole process of, of creating... And my, yes, and my imagination was really, really... I, I mean, I absolutely loved writing it and I, I really imagined these characters and I thought, I've got to have illustrations. So mm. I've worked with an illustrator and there are ten illustrations in the book, uh, not just the cover, and he's, he's fantastic. It's called Luke Spooner. I'm giving him a plug. Yes, go on. And uh, he's very good and um, he created uh, ten of the scenes that um, I wanted him to create mm. around the characters and you know the, the key things in the book. So let's talk about um, publishing. What route did you go down? Amazon. I've published on Amazon and publishing on Amazon uh, you have to get your book in the you might have written it in one way but they want it in another format. So I had to enlist the help of my great computer guy who helped me. I, I feel I've climbed Everest in, turn of, in terms of <laughs> learning computer and IT <laughs> skills and, and social networking stuff recently and actually le uploading the book was a step too far. Oh. Hmm. But actually when I looked into self-publishing I thought yes this is right for me because I don't want to change any of the book. I wanted my creation to stay as my creation. Self-publishing I would recommend it but it's hard, it's hard work. So I thought you should give some tips about writing. You have to write the book you want to read. Yeah. I think you've got to be gripped by your subject, otherwise it's just too hard. Yeah. It really is too hard. Um, keeping the whole thing going is difficult, and the continuity, making sure all the plot lines, you know, you've got cards on the plot lines and the themes and, and, all, and all that sort of thing. Yeah. I said before you should keep a, a, a notebook and a pen with you at all times. You've got to be like a magpie, overhear people's conversation. And words, if you like a word, write it down, keep, mm. it, keep it for later. Read a lot, and the thing is, you won't write a book if you don't write it. 
read the things you like reading. You know, sometimes when you're writing, you do get stuck and you think, I wonder how this is going to unfold. And do a bit of research, change, mm. do something else. Uh, go for a walk, do anything, because it, it will resolve itself. I mean, that's what I found. Mm -hmm. If you keep battering away at the idea, at the computer, at the idea, it won't work. Mm -hmm. So I would just read anything, read other people's stuff, see what inspires you. And um, there's some, there are some, you know, lots of authors will talk, are talking on YouTube and places about how they've, how they've written and what's worked for them. And I, I watched a lot of their, their um, oh, did you? YouTube. And I think don't stop. So, you know, if you've had a bad day and it doesn't really work, just don't stop. The opening chapter has to grip the reader, and I think I broke my first page about 30... We wrote it 30 times. <laughs> Why did you do that? Because I just wanted to get it right. Over the, over the sort of, I don't know, uh, year that I was writing the book, okay. because I went back and changed a lot of it. And my character... The characters changed during that time, and I wanted to make sure... Talitha had started off in one way and actually she became slightly different. She became more, she became more adventurous as I wrote the book and I, I wanted that to be on the first page. My chapters all have individual names that sometimes have a take on other things, like there's one chapter called A Night in the Forest and I guess it's like A Night at the Opera, the, the uh, Marx Brothers film. You know, things oh, like okay. that. Oh. So um, I liked I liked sort of naming the chapters. And I loved naming the characters. Really, what I did was, let me talk about the place names first. I have a, I love maps. Okay. And I love maps of like the Yorkshire Dales and um, the Lake District. Mm. And I just poured over these old maps, and there are fantastic names in those places. Because my my Talitha goes on a journey out into the wilds of Breedore, mm. and so she comes ac across some very strange places and some very strange creatures. So if I'm driving along and I see an interesting name on the road sign when I'm in the Lake District or Yorkshire, I'll, make, I'll get somebody to make a note of it and I'll think about how that will work. The characters' names, I, I just, I looked at loads of things. I looked at the names of flowers, I looked at the names of birds, I looked mm -hmm. in mythical civilization, and, and sometimes the, word, the names just came to me. And they just evolved as the character evolved. And mm -hmm. I don't think I struggled ever to find the name. I mean, the person that she's trying to find in the story is called Asenath, which is a very strange name. And it's her, Amongst many. Her cousin. <laughs> and uh, the, 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 the three ants are called Agatha, Sibylla and Edwina. I mean, they're not that strange. Oh, Edwina is all right. They're, they're, Edwina. they're slightly old, slightly old-fashioned. And, uh, yeah, and the creatures that evolved, because they go into these caves and they have to climb through all of these caves under out of the uh, out of the way mountain and these are full of very strange creatures called groats and the murk mole and they have to fight them <laughs> okay so now that it, it looks like writing is going to take up majority of the time is that what you want i'm never bored i just love creating these characters and these worlds i know the craft a bit better now yeah because when i started out i didn't know anything so the other advice i would give always stop when you know you've got somewhere to carry on. Always stop when you're bringing, brimming with some more ideas. Because mm -hmm. if you stop when you're stuck, you're stuck. When you go back, you've, you've got notes about where you're going to go to. So it's an optimistic re-entering of the story. Mm -hmm. If you're very stuck, um, if you stop when you're stuck, and sometimes that does happen, um, it's harder to get back into it. Very good piece of advice, actually. It's quite inspiring. Well, you're never going to write a story if you don't write. Don't think about it, just do it. OK, so when is your next one coming out? Or you mm, can't tell us? I'd probably like to have it out for before Christmas, but I'm not promising because it depends on what, it depends what goes on. And um, I don't know how the story will unfold. It is a trilogy, but I put on Amazon Trilogy Plus because I might get inspired. I might write more than three books. I don't know. I think as long as people want to read the books and as long as I enjoy writing them, I'll yeah. carry on.